The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this 23rd day of August. My pleasure to be here. And uh, let's just go straight to the market. Dow's down 46 at 21,854. Spectacular day yesterday in terms of having come down pretty seriously. Um, but I think it was a, a case of short covering, some buying. Um, light volume, do anything you want type summer trading session. Um, S and P is down four at twenty four forty. Uh, let's see, twenty four forty eight. Hmm, getting a little difficult to see these days, huh? S and P is at twenty four forty eight. Yep, down four twenty. Um, I'll show you the patterns as we go. Let me do that again. Here we go. The 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 Dow is down forty five. Um, having gone from 22,179 down to the 22,600 level, uh, no, no great shakes, six, 700 uh, points uh, in a consolidation phase. But what's really important about it is that we've got two and a half trading days to go. We've got about almost a week to go, in, less than a week, of course, uh, for the monthly chart to complete. And that makes it really important if there is going to be a new all time high above 22,179, something really amazing has to happen over the next few days. At this particular point, lower lows, lower highs, that's all we can say. And that means that your sell mode in the uh, daily chart continues. And the weekly chart has gone to a sell signal. But I have indicated a down arrow because the technicals are very weak, which does suggest that it's probably going to be a sell mode by Friday. Meantime, let's go to the S&P. I can give you parameters there. So the Dow major support will be the 21,600 level. Major resistance short term is 21, uh, 22,030. The S&P down 375 at 2448. Nice comeback after a very weak uh, early session today. But it's still lower lows and lower highs, daily in cell mode, weekly in a cell mode as well. And I should have shown you this because I want to go to the um, the futures, which are down five, a little deeper consolidation there at 2447. This daily chart, I think I mentioned yesterday, has just innumerable, a plethora of Chapman wave techniques that we've been following. Uh, the most important one was this this purple. Let me just see. Yeah, you can see it is kind of a dark. This dark line down and this dark line down was a one to one Chapman wave parallel lightning bolt pattern. So this is the standard pattern that people look at A to B equals C to D. But I discovered a long time ago that if you can get the parallelism, in other words, if you can get the equal number of bars on the downside to equal the same number of bars on the downside, when it starts back down again after the rebound, then you can expect if it matches and pretty close to the one to one extension, you can anticipate a pretty decent bounce, but the bounce should take no more than the number of bars that you had to the upside before. And in this case, the low that was made at 24.30 in the E-mini right there on the 11th had one, two, three sessions to the 24.74 round number high of, let me expand a little bit so we can see that, there are, to the 24, uh, 47 round number high of the 16th of August. And then it came down. Also, there was one, two, three bars down. And here it's one, two, three bars down. And now we're into the second bar. By the third bar, that is by tomorrow, Thursday, we should run out of steam and start to head down by Friday. It's kind of the way I look at this particular pattern. There's a parallelism which which gets replicated if it doesn't. In other words, if we go four bars, that's different. And all of a sudden you say, oops, no parallel here. It's starting to change. Number two, 
is that the MACD is very weak. It's tried to rebound. It hasn't really succeeded. The histogram is still very negative. The stochastic is down at 25%. There was a wide beta between, a wide difference, theta, I think it's called, between the, the green nine period experiential uh, moving average, the differential, and the slow moving average, the red one. Um, and that should have seen a very big follow through, almost a double digit follow through in the Dow, and probably about a 12 point, an eight to 12 point move up in the. Um, in the E-mini today, days young, but it hasn't done it yet. Still down six. And the weekly chart has decisively gone to a sell mode. It can go to a higher high, but it's saying that all the technical confirmations, the silent doji of the candle of the 4th of August, the week of the 4th of August, the new high, 2488.50, turns into a red candle the same day. Um, the... Uh, Close below the nine period moving average in the weekly chart that week of the 11th of August, the following week, the 18th, a close below. This week, we are so far above the nine period moving average. That's good, but the MACD is very weak and the stochastic is at 73% weak, and the on balance volumes are attempting to rally, but it's not. The 120 minute chart made that peak D at the 200 period moving average, the orange line 2454, and it's pulled back. It's holding quite nicely. But the stochastics weighed down 61%. So let's get out of this and say the parameters to watch on the short term 2439 in the E mini starts to push even lower and a pop to the 2451 area. As I said to my subscribers to my opening call this morning, says uh, we can go um, if, if it holds that level. That's quite good action. It could go a little higher. So this is still the early stages of the session, just not even three hours into the, to the day. Let's see what goes on. Um, let's continue. I want to look at the QQQ series. The QQQ series uh, up from the low of the day above the nine period moving average, but down at minus 33 at 142.88. Magdi is just okay. Stochastic's trying to turn up. So far, this is just lower lows and lower highs with bounces in between. That's the way we're looking at it. The weekly chart has held above the nine period moving average. Um, so we'll just give you the parameters here. A close below 142 in the next few days would be pretty negative, and a close above the high of uh, the day, no, the high of yesterday, 143.35, would be extremely positive. Short term, that is, but it's still way below the high of 140, uh, one, in the 140, just, a, just under 146. Now let's go to, crew, uh, I want to go to gold. Gold, uh, when I lost it, was just about, a, yep, it's up to, it's holding the nine period moving average, considering that could be a peak F. This is good action for three sessions, just going sideways. And it says that the MACD hasn't crossed positive, the stochastic's still quite weak. Um, and we'll see. I'll give you parameters right now. Gold above 1301, very positive, even if it's just intraday. Above 1301 is very good. It's at 1293 right now. And a close below, and this is a close now, not just sneaking underneath. A close for 1212, 86 would be negative. Um, silver is, at this point, silver is holding quite nice. Same thing. Uh, it's a 16.99. 16 16 the close below 16. Oh, let me do this quickly. The close below 16.8 would be negative, and the close above 17.17 .17 would be positive. And I'm going to go to crude oil as we're about to close out this segment. Crude oil is quite nice, up 48 cents at 48.31. So here's the question. USO is looking even more interesting today. Breakout coming soon. Well, I might agree with that. I'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank 
Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. So we're going to go back to the USO, which is the crude oil. This is the United States oil fund trading at 9.87 up 10 cents. This is another one of those patterns that we've seen so often lately. You've got this diamond formation or wedge formation coming to an apex. But as it gets to the trend line resistance, it reverses back down. And then as it comes to the trend line support, it reverses back up. Can drive you nuts until it breaks out. And even the breakout sometimes in this particular pattern is just saying that the larger, ooh, what do I call that? The larger flag, the back, the back backdrop, the pole, it isn't really. The larger distance from the top of the year uh, of the uh, declining trend line to the bottom of the trend line, in other words, in the USO from the high of the 14th at 10.06 to the low of 9.52 on the 17th, that becomes resistance to support within it. So this is a pattern that you'll read in textbooks that says the breakout says you're going to go directly in the opposite direction. Once you break out and you break a trend line, it should go towards the top of the flag. I, I look at it and I say the way I love to look at these things is to look at it more as a cup formation or an arch formation. And what it says is that if there is a break, you need to decisively take out the pole left side, in this case, is not the one that we're going to because it wouldn't fit. The, the high that was made at that peak C1, C2 high of the 10th at 10.25. It's this one right, sorry, 10 point, I didn't mean 10 point, yeah, 10.25. This one is 10.06. That's already the one I was looking at. So the 10.06 has to be taken out and then you can go all the way up. But most importantly is you want to be looking at what magnets are there? What is the attractor? What is the detractor? In this case, the attractor would be that if there was a push above 10.07, 10.08, that's a big move from here, but let's just say there's a break and it goes right to there, around right about 10.09. Immediately, the top of that candle, that's the candle of the 10th, would be your target, 10.25. But it, all you need to get to is 10.20 because by that time, the magnet, if I had to draw a trend line here, if I was, say, drawing like Bollinger Band or a Keltner Band or something, and I, or even a Chapman Wave inside track, the repellent zone, that repellent zone would start round about 10.23. But once you're in it, 
you could very easily go to the orange 200 period exponential moving average. Why? Because look how long it's taken since the since the USO broke down on the 17th of April from 1115 and took out the 200 period moving average. It's gotten close at a peak D with a doji candle high of the seven of 10.70 on the 24th of May. But it hasn't even it, it hasn't been able to touch that line. But look what happened. It gets even closer in that peak C one of 31st of July at 10.32. And then it it doesn't get as close, but it tries to get close and then gets repelled at 10.25 on the 10th. So this trend line right here, if I can do this right here. I'm going to make I can't do a curve line. I could do a curve line, but this is really all I need is a, is a straight line. And I'm going to make it nice and nice and heavy. I'm going to make it bright red. I'm going to make it thicker and I'll show you something very interesting and we'll just keep it there. And what I am saying to Paul is, Paul, you're already in this. You liked it. I think you're correct in saying that it has the potential to move sharply higher because it's taken the opportunity to make higher lows not necessarily higher highs, but higher lows for four, for four sessions. And that says, oh, that's good action because all it needs now is just to pop over this little gray dash trend line at 9.91. And all of a sudden, it's it's free. It's over, over there. So yes, I think right now, the opportunity to take a, take a stab at the USO is much greater. I see, I feel that risk reward Risk reward, you've got $9.86, you've got five to six cents on the upside, which says, wow, that'll be good. Not only that, the uh, it will be a leg C in the 120 minute chart above 998. And if it does that, you should immediately go to the high that was made at um, nine, sorry, 10.06 at 1130 on the 14th. That's exactly what we're talking about. And all you need to say is risk reward. All I need is about six or seven cents on the upside, because if it does this, if it pulls back again, it goes under the nine period moving average of 9.81, it goes to 9.79, it's just merely stuck in this range again. So what have you got? You've got a seven cent breakout to the upside, which would be very, very significant in that the MACD would be helped. It isn't good, but it'll be helped. It'll be better. And the stochastic should start to move higher. And I, that's what I'm looking at. If it's me, I'm holding off for another day on USO. I don't, I'm going to just give it time. Well, I have to because I, my newsletter went out at 8.35 this morning, so there's nothing I can do. But I'm looking at it and I tell you the truth, I don't yet see a breakout, but I do see the potential for a push to the upside into the tens if it can really quickly get to 9.93. Make it simple, that's all. Okay, enough with crude oil. Let's go to TLT. TLT is trading, trying to test the recent high of 127.15 on the 18th. It's at 126.97. My contention has been that the bonds will continue to rally as long as there's weakness in the general market. We'll see if that holds true. But you've got 126.33 to 126 as probably near-term important support to hold. A close below 125.50 says, oops, be careful, you've got a change of direction here in the TLT on the shorter term. Meantime, you've got this U-shaped pattern, which is exactly the pattern we've got in two of the stocks that we own. Um, and they seem, to want, they seem to want to fulfill that deep U-shaped pattern to try to get towards the left side high, in this case, 128.57. So those are the parameters I'm looking at. Any move into the 127.30s will be very positive in the TLT, the Lehman 20 T T-note um, fund. And uh, let's see, I've covered all the uh, IW, I TW. It'll not to all works. No, IWT. IYT. What's the matter with me today? Gah. IYT is the um, iShares Transportation Average. And I spoke about this yesterday. I said the magnet of this 200 period exponential moving average, I'm finding just too strong. Uh, it's down $1.90 at 163. I This is important for me. I think that this is telling us a lot about the market, that the economy as it deals with the rails and the airlines, question about the airlines, let's just go to XAL. Um, 
is it's just oh wow downs at 171 and 10440. Look at that leg D. There's not been there's been one little tiny peak A over there, and the rest has just been down, down, down. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, six lousy candles, six weeks of lousy candles. Not good. And that's really my issue here. Now, could I could I review my what what I'm looking at for 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 uh, one of the listeners? Yes. We're still holding the Dow short position. We added this morning uh, another index short. Uh, one of the reasons is I think this particular index is a conglomerate of everything I'm looking at. And therefore, my bias is to say it should be going down and we want to be in that downside. Yes, we have a three times long position, a half position of a three times long. That's a pretty big commitment. But hey, we've got to stop in place and we'll see what happens. We have individual stocks that are doing uh, um, one is down a little bit. Um, a couple of them are still up very nicely. Hey, this is a mixed market. I'll be back. Dow's down 46. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Oh, a good question here. Sabre Healthcare reads uh, Inc. Uh, trading at 21.54, up 10 cents. The question is, would you get rid of Sabre, uh, Sabre or Sabre Healthcare and replace it with Verizon. Is it Verizon? Is it Verizon's question? Yeah, with Verizon. So let, let's just do this. Um, Verizon has been under pressure. Verizon Communications trading at 48.45, and Sabra was trading at so that's 48. It's trading at 21.54. Um, they really different contexts, but yeah, for dividends. 
I'm going to say hold on for three days. I like the, the, the attempt right now to start moving higher. I like that it's in healthcare. I like that it's a region healthcare. We own one in our portfolio for the for my subscribers. Done really nicely, just uh, in terms of the market having chop, 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 and this has been going higher since we entered it in August the second. Um, so I'm inclined to say, from the patterns that I'm looking at, both in the daily and the weekly, I would say if you're holding it, I would hold it a little longer. I might say in a separate way that Verizon over the next, I would have to give it, uh, probably I want to give it until the, the first full week of September. I want to see how this rectangle formation evolves. Normally you would get a pullback to test an important gap or a nine period moving average in Verizon trading at 48 41. In this case, it would be one of two things. It would be either the gap under 46, we were gapped up on the 25th or whatever that was of, of July. And the weekly chart is 47.14. So it's kind of uh, the 47 to 46 area is really the testing case. But more importantly, I want to see how the weekly is able to hold the support into the start of September for the candle of September, because the weekly, the monthly chart has had an arch formation with a lower, with a higher, higher low from the 38 low that was made in August of 2015 to the most recent low in the 43 area. So I'm just going to say I'm going to recommend not doing anything. Let's look at that. But in the shorter term, just so that you know, I would have a stop because it's so close at 20. It's a 2152. Give it one more point. You've held, if you've held it this long, you're either in a nice position on the long side or you got in higher up and now it's lower side. One point is not going to make that much difference. Let's give it a point, Grace, just for in a few days. At any point, if you see it trading at 20 point, 20 point 90, just email me or text me or ask me during the show. But at 2152, Sebra is holding well. This might be, in fact, the, the, the area that you want to be looking at perhaps because it'll be an even better dividend and it has the potential to just even rally up to 23 and a half. I would say an 8% rally with a dividend of maybe 3.8 or 4.1, whatever it is in this particular instance, I would look at it favorably. So let's just hold that. So I hope that helps you. I, I am saying don't do any replacing, but if you want to add into Verizon, if this is holding well, Let's look at Verizon. I, I really need to give it about a week, a little more. I'd like the first week of September. So let's hold off there. Maybe it'll be higher, but that's okay. It's telling us that's, that's it's in the area that's favorable right now, if that's the case in, in about two weeks' time. Uh, next question. I did that, did that, did that. Or oh, Home Depot. Question about Home Depot. Home Depot. Home Depot took a dive. It was at 160.56 on the, 19th, the week of the 19th of May of this year. Uh, pulled back 15 points uh, just over to the 144 area. Had a really strong rally of uh, 12 points, in fact, to 156. Now it's down at 147. Lower lows are lower highs. That's the theme, at least for now. And my suggestion is that if you are looking to buy Home Depot, I would give it at least two months. Let's see what happens. I, I don't think that it's worth buying it now. I think that the, the reward would be maybe two to three points on the upside. But the risk is that if it takes out 144, three points to the downside, takes out 144 support, it really is a black hole. It could go down quite sharply. And if you're looking at it in relation to the HDX, which is the housing sector, look at that. That's a peak, a sell mode in the daily, sell mode in the weekly, and a doji candle at a p potential peak F slash C in the monthly. And I'm watching it very, very closely. The technicals in the monthly are still very good. And Lowe's, L-O-W, kind of took it on the chin, uh, made an arch formation, went underneath the left side low of... Uh, 71.58. So lows is making new lows. So it's in leg D in the weekly chart. This is not good stuff. Let me tell you. I, I, it makes me. It makes me say to myself, the risk is starting to become greater in what had done really well. 
But even the stuff, the sectors that are trying to hold its individual stocks rather than a sector that I'm looking at that seem to be holding quite nicely. So just be real careful out there. Um, next question I had was, whoops, where was it? Uh, C-O-T-Y. I don't think I've followed C-O-T-Y. Is that Cote, uh, Cote, Cote Inc.? I, I, I don't know. What, anyway, Cote Inc., uh, what is it? Perfumes and stuff? Retail perfume. Uh, retail perfume, sir, it stinks. Whoa, look at that. The monthly chart, A. I'm going to call that 21 to 2106. I'm going to call this A. Phantom Peak B, C, Peak D, Kaplop. Um, no, no, no. Don't even touch it. Don't even think about it. So what's the other one that in the perfumes is called? Oh, I was in Newport in a, in a consignment store about five or six years ago. And I was... <laughs> Looked at my cell phone. Of course, I was not doing the shopping, need I say. And I'm looking at my, it wasn't Ulta, it was another one. Perfumes or uh, uh, beauty products. Oh, and I looked at it and it had just been clobbered that day. I looked at it and I thought, oh my. Um, no, it wasn't EL. Oh, it doesn't matter. But it looks, it looked just like this. Um, you know what? I, I remember George spoke about it recently. Um, it's just that I can actually visualize everything except the symbol. Uh, all right, I'll try to think about it. But I, I love to look at the, uh, the whole area of the beauty products because that's usually the last area in, in recessions. The folks who use those beauty products are the last ones to give up their beauty products when it comes to re recession. I can understand why. Um, and they usually last a lot longer. And then when they take a, take a dive, they take a big dive. Ulta Beauty Products went to a peak G slash C. And I believe that by the end of the month, I'm going to be calling this a G, not as a C. And uh, no, it wasn't ELF. And it made a peak F in the daily. It looks horrible. Um, it was up to the 310 3, area, 311 area, and right now it's at 231. Not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. Basil Chapman, Take Your Technician's Hour, and I'd love to take your calls. No calls. Very quiet today. Oh, it's summer's day. Oh, I will not be here Thursday. I will not be here Thursday and Friday before I forget. I'll be out. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. All right, we were talking about uh, that beauty product, of course. I always do this. I, say, I just know it begins with an L. It begins with an L. Oh, that's right. Vitamin shop. VSI. <laughs> that was, that's what it was. It was the vitamin shop. And wow, down at $5.60. And just a couple of years ago, it was in the forty-five fifty area. Whew, that is trouble. All right, so much for that. I can't even remember what we were talking about, but that's not the issue. The issue is I got the VSI. I found it because I, uh, I remember George talking about it. Uh, so, yes, so the VIX. Now let's do this because this is very important. The Dow's down 54, uh, SMB's down 6 now. What? Let's see, what segment are we in? We've got two segments, right? So, in this segment, I'm going to take just a moment. Uh, yeah, so in this segment, I wanted to just go to the VIX index. So I wanted to talk about a couple of things. So the VIX index is at 11.94. Ah, just the other day, it was up at 16. Now, what is really important, in a bear phase, and what I mean by a bear phase, I mean within the context of the daily charts having already given some kind of a signal to say they in sell modes and almost every single one has. The weekly charts are very close and when as soon as they start to give sell signals that are really confirmed and I really would like the Dow, the NYA, that's the New York Stock Exchange, the S&P, the QQQ series, the IWM, IWM has been very, very weak. Let me just go there to show you. It's rallying today, but look at this, 144 down to 132. That is a 12-point decline. That's about, at what, eight, just over 8% in just a couple of weeks. That is a big deal, okay? So let me go. I, I, I want to talk about this because it's the thematic material that I refer to constantly. Uh, I'm going to spin off one more time just to say thematic material. Tanglewood, 1932, they opened Tanglewood, the BSO Summer Home, uh, Boston Symphony Orchestra, Summer Home, because of his wife paid for the land and all that, and he got funding for everything else. And then he said, I will not let my musicians uh, play in the rain. So they had to build a, a roof. It was very expensive. This is a depression, 1932, so 931, they started building the roof. It opens in 1932. And each time I talk about major, major uh, uh, expansions or construction, it's usually for another generation when it's major, not just something that you're adding. And in this case, that Kusevitsky uh, uh, is still going strong. The Tanglewood shed is beautiful. I'm going to come right back to the theme in a moment of, of, the, of the VIX. But what's really important is that They've just announced four brand new buildings at Tanglewood. Very costly buildings. 
And of course, being musicians, they are costly because you've got a, acoustics, you've got all sorts of things that you have to, 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 to contend with. And that's again for the next generation. When does it come about? Right here in this coda phase. And a coda means end. So this is a phase that can last a while, <clears throat> but everything I'm looking at, all the all the all the parts are coming together. Now in a shorter term, thematically, the volatility index has to climb every day. It has to find a foundation. Would have been in the 14s, it hasn't. It's at 11.95. So we're still looking at the chop, chop, chop where the weekly charts have not yet signaled that they are ready to really come down sharply. So far, we can only call this a consolidation. Bear phases inevitably have the VIX index closing each day closer to the highs, getting into the teens, mid-teens. I've had to, I haven't done it official yet, but I'm probably going to have to start very soon thinking about the levels of the volatility index having changed just a little bit, maybe a point, a half a point. I'm still saying under under the teens, you've got buying pressure. In the teens, you've got selling pressure to start. But it is in the, um, basically, it is in the 13 to 15 area where you start to see selling pressure maintained through the rest of the day. And when you start to see the VIX index close towards the highs, the futures open, double digit down, try to rally, all rallies fail, you make lower lows and lower highs, and you close the day lousy, and the next day, because the overseas markets are terrible, you open the next day down sharply, and then they try to rally. We haven't seen that for more than two days. Not even, We haven't really even seen that. Even the last uh, decline, sharp decline, the 270 point down, the day was, it started off kind of benign. It wasn't like it was big down. So we haven't yet come to that phase. And we are still seeing areas that are actually contending with uh, individual stocks that are still acting very, very well. We spoke about uh, in the den, we spoke about Berkshire Hathaway just a moment ago. Berkshire Hathaway up again, uh, um, holding at the highs at 180.33, leg E in the monthly, leg D in the daily, and leg E slash C in the uh, uh, daily, but I think it's going to be what I call the right shoulder failure. It's actually really like a right arm extension. If the MACD, which is really just kind of moderately good, and the stochastic, which is still kind of weak at 72%, but trying to rally, if that starts to turn down by Tuesday of next week, we could see Berkshire Hathaway under 177. So I'm watching these really closely. Now, let's go back to the theme. The theme is <clears throat> that the tide right now is riptides and regular tides in the daily, mostly with the tide going out. The weekly chart has the tide in the middle of its transition, but it hasn't transitioned to going out. It's in that choppy phase, up and down, up and down. <coughs> Let's call it a high-level beach consolidation, but it's about to turn down. I think that we are very close to the next phase of a move down, and I'll explain why real quickly. Before we go to the break, I have time. In the chapter wave methodology, what we look at is peak Ds, Es, and Fs, of course. But most importantly, we also use the chapter wave 5 a lot more now because I've, I've had over two years to, to work with it, to experiment with it, to, to trade with it, etc. So we went chapter wave 5 to a peak D at 22,179 on the 8th of August. That was also a peak D. It was in the leg, Chapman Wave 5 up, and then finally confirmed down. Then we went Chapman Wave 1 to the downside, leg A went to trough A, 21,842 in the daily. Rallies up in leg A minus because it failed at 22,038 for Chapman Wave 2 to the downside. Chapman Wave 3 extends that by breaking 21,842 and goes to 21,600. That is 3. Now we are in Chapman Wave 4 in a leg A, which should also get make no more than a B minus and make an arch formation. And I'd already drawn in all these dashed lines. That's what my subscribers to my opening call, that's what we're following. So I'm going to answer the question about the SMHs in a moment. What is happening with the semiconductor index? So if I'm looking at this, I'm saying, OK, there's no real confirmation that we started for because you have to have an actual leg down. So far, this is still, uh, I'm sorry, five to the downside. This is still four to the upside. 
if there is another 120 minute bar which actually starts a move to the downside then what we're looking at that is uh, 1250 okay that's a that's our we've got the final final break and we'll have we'll be back after this then what we're looking at is a move below 21,600 to start your chapter wave five and that could be an acceleration right down to this ugly candle of the 24th of july at 21,496 and then we'll have to see what happens i'll be right back bounce with chapter tiger technicians out. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Hi, folks. So let's just do this. I had two questions. Mike, I wanted to know, I have 45 strike calls expire in 23 days, September expiration, thinking of taking a loss of 42.95 to 43.40. Ooh. Um, entry was, oh, entry was at 44 on APC. APC is, in fact, an darker petroleum. No, 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 Mike. I, I like it. I think that you... you this is the pattern that I'm trying to look at that I would love to see in the USO because it's going to kind of, in a, in a deflective way, help uh, APC. It's trading at 43.23, up 96 cents. So what I'm looking at here is I would, I would not, hmm, I know it's really close because all it needs to do is fail from here and then it, there's a black hole to the downside. It could go under 40 very quickly. But no, this the magnet is just the histogram is improving. The stochastics at 23.75 is starting to get above the 20% level and hold. Give it. This is what I'm going to recommend to you, Mike. If if you're nervous, thing take take or if you say you've got five. Take off one or two and say, you know what, I'm taking off two. The reason why I say try to keep the, 
at least 50% of, of what you've got, is that you're going to see if Anadarko APC opens tomorrow and makes a new recovery high. Let's just say the 4344 is the high for the day. If it goes above 4354, the high of the 16th, doesn't have to even close it, just has to go above it. You've raised the support to 4281. I think your opportunity now, I know that if you're talking about getting a little nervous about losses, then it's at 42.95. Now it's 50 cents higher than when you typed that in this morning. The reason why I wanted to do it last is because I think it's looking good. So I'm just going to say to you, try if you can to stick to as much as the position as you can. Do take one or two because you don't want to lose, you know, you can lose money. But you've got 23 days. I think in the 23 days, you're going to see this at least attempt once to touch 43.75, and then you'll be really close to break even. That's that. And I'm going to answer the SMHs right now. The SMH is the semiconductor. I, I still think the semiconductor index is going to fail. It's trading at 86.38. Um, it is up 9 cents right now. But if it takes out 85.90 on the downside in the next two days, that'll be it. It's run out of energy. And that's what I'm looking at. I think the SMHs are going to uh, slide over the next two days. Hi folks, the 800th edition of The Gold Report will be published next Monday. To celebrate the last 15 and a half years of calling the gold market, I'm doing a special promotion. You can receive 60 weeks of The Gold Report for only $600. That is $10 a week, which is a savings of 50% off the regular price. If you want to understand the entire supply and demand equations that move the gold market, including where the XAU, HUI, and mining equities are looking to trade, if you want to understand the correlation between the dollar, the yen, the South African rand, bonds, and gold, the gold report is for you. I'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop for each equity, ETF, future, or option trade. The gold report is a long-term newsletter with a focus on building real wealth to a successful portfolio of gold and silver equities. You can take advantage of this special promotion until August 27th. That's 60 weeks of the gold report for $600, which is a 50% savings. Go to the front page of TFNN.com or call 877-518-9190 and order now.